Welcome to the APL Spotlight Series. I have a guest from the UK, but to be honest, she's traveling all around the world quite often, and she's super seasoned on the consciousness spirituality front, as well as a business strategist, great for creative direction. It's Ellen Holmes. I'd like to welcome her to the APL Spotlight Series. Welcome, Ellen. Hi, thank you, Michael. Well, it's excellent to see you again. We always have fun. Uh, we had way too much fun before recording. I'm going to go ahead and light some sage like we do in the regular show, the uh, Angels Positivity and Love show. She's about to be a guest on that as well. You're lucky you get to see her here and in action. And in a moment, she's going to talk to us about diamond consciousness. But Ellen, what's been going on in your world these days? Well, I've been traveling a lot recently. I've just spent the last four months in Tulum in Mexico, which has been super activating. It's an incredibly powerful porthole. And so I literally just returned back to the UK yesterday. So I'm in a period of transition, um, but enjoying every single moment of it. Oh, I love it. Well, let's get you some sage, but if you want Tulum, let's bring you some ocean smells. <laughs> if your eyes go shut or at home, you want to catch a little bit of Mexico, do so. If you shut your eyes, you can catch a little wave action. And if you don't mind for the audience letting us know what you're experiencing. Right now, so I'm... I'm smelling the sage that you're pushing in this direct direction. It's beautiful. I'm also connecting with Tulum and particularly the vortex that I was awakened to while I was there. It's an incredibly powerful vortex, one like I've never experienced before. And the best way that I can put it is somebody actually asked me, which chakra do you think Tulum is? because there's different vortexes around the planet, often connected to different chakras. And my answer to that is, I don't see it as a chakra, rather it's like almost above chakras. I had this experience when I was at a party with many other light workers, and it was like the codes of the new earth of 5D were grounding in as everybody was like upgrading to this incredibly powerful music. And yeah, it just feels like a new earth city of light, really anchoring upon the planet like I've never experienced anywhere else on the earth. So I was just reminded of that when you were rushing the stage. Yeah. If we can go back a little bit, um, you had a big experience and I know we're going to cover it in the show, but could you at least mention, was it 2020 that you went through a, a bit of a transition? So it was in 2013, 2013. Is when I went through my Kundalini awakening. So my whole entire life changed forever how I stepped onto the spiritual path and when I really began my ascension process. Okay, now we were talking also before the show, like I didn't know how competitive you were as an 800 meter specialist on the track. Uh -huh. uh, can you just share with us how, for example, 2013 shifted things for your running, for example, or how you just interacted with people or mm -hmm. the, the experiences you went through at the time? Uh-huh. So I'd actually stopped running several years earlier following a stress fracture, which I remember at the time, I think this was about 2009, I think 2010, 2010, that I stopped running competitively. But I had a load of unresolved trauma that had piled up in me. And that led to a stress fracture that led to me straying from the track. And... I went into my dark night of the soul and I actually began to party a lot. I lived a very polarizing life to my previous season as an athlete, as an 800 meter runner. And this actually led to my dark night of the soul when I was 19 in 2013. And this triggered my Kundalini awakening. So I actually came back to running following my Kundalini awakening when angels began to appear to me and they guided me on the path of self-healing. And one of the things that they guided me to do was get back into athletics. And so that in itself has been a whole process because obviously when I was a competitive athlete, there was like all this ego of competing and being compared with other people. So it's been a whole process that I've had to work through. And today I treat my running as more of a spiritual practice to elevate my consciousness. Mm. Okay, and uh, not that I'm a runner for 46 years, so I've got to do this. You, your PR in the 800 was two minutes and 11 seconds, which is awfully fast. I don't think I've broken 217 
and this is back in like 1998, 2000. So it's it's fast. Do you have accolades you could just mention from high school, university, or just European circuit somewhere? Can you mention a couple of titles or you know meets that you've won or placed in or whatever uh -huh. I'm to say? So I think I stopped running when I was 16. Okay. But um, prior to that, I had um, second in the national championships, 800 meters when I was about 14 or 15. I was um, championship, um, I won the championship of my county in Kent. So I won that several years in a row. I think I also hold the, or I did hold the 600 meter um, national record at a time. I think for under 15. <laughs> Wild. Uh, I think I might still, I did, I haven't checked for a while, but that was pretty cool. <laughs> And uh, today you're still running right now, uh, occasionally, somewhat? Yeah, I do run regularly, um, not competitively. Maybe one day I'll get back into it. But yeah, no, I know I love to run. It's one of the most powerful practices that I use to transmute the energy and the upgrades and to maintain a consistent high vibration. Mm. And I'll do it. Uh, I'll mention it here. I'll either cleaning the house, like vacuuming or getting my hands in the soil, gardening out front. Let's say I have a session tomorrow, I'll go for a long run to build up the Shakti or my energy ahead of time, if I hear that that's what I'm supposed to do. But I just generally try to go as, do as many miles as I can daily. It uh -huh. keeps, me, keeps me sane. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's so powerful. And I often think it's quite interesting how exercising, you know, it's like exorcism. You're exorcis exercising the negative energies out of you. So there's like something there. Oh, and I think it can deeply assist. I think the first, we'll say kilometers, but miles, um, you'll have thinking pop up, whatever's sticking with you, if you're having a reaction uh -huh. to something or someone, and then eventually it gets shed. And for me, I'm always doing music. I don't always do music, but mostly, uh, and once even the music blurs and you go mm -hmm. beyond, you just go beyond words, you go beyond mm -hmm. reality, you go beyond this. So uh -huh. that's what I like about it. Uh-huh. Such a powerful medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, where do you want to take us? Something called diamond consciousness I thought was really interesting. We, You love like helping people with yoga, but not just yoga, the awareness that goes with yoga that turns it into something beyond yoga, kind of like what we were talking about with running. Do you want to take us yoga kundalini first and then mm -hmm. talk to us about um, the chakras a little bit? And then there's something called diamond consciousness. I love when you talk about all of the above, but take us where you will. Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. That's like a full Kundalini rising journey. And so, yeah, I've always on my journey been deeply connected to the Kundalini wisdom because it was right at the beginning of my awakening. Um, I'm a Kundalini yoga teacher now and I've studied in India. I've become initiated by gurus in Rishikesh and in the Himalayas. And so I wanted to study in India and go straight to the heart of the teachings and really uncover the forgotten wisdom of yoga. And so what many don't realize is yoga, the purpose of all yoga is to facilitate a Kundalini awakening. And so it's an ancient path to assist us ultimately in our full body ascension, because when our Kundalini is awakened, it rises up through each chakra, assisting us in moving into higher vibrational states of embodiment. And in turn, awakening our mystical cities, our mystical abilities, that gives us the capacity to move with our body into higher dimensions. And so this is what the likes of Jesus did. There's a lot of stories from his missing years in the Bible of him actually studying in India, the path of Kriya Yoga. And they still speak of his presence in the Kundalini ashrams. Also Mahatma Babaji, who's another one who came after Jesus. I think it was 203 AC. Do you know Mahatma Babaji? You heard of him before? So, yeah, he's another one who was recorded to have never died. Born in 203 AC, and people still encounter him in the Himalayas today. And he was also a student of the Path of Kriya Yoga. I think it's the same school that Jesus actually studied in. And so there's this mystical side of yoga that has been forgotten in the West. Often it's seen as a, a sport, but really, truly, it's an ancient mystical art for our full body ascension. Hmm. And so what intrigues me as well is the ancient connection to the elder beings. And so the stories of how yoga was given to humanity as it was given by Lord Shiva, the big blue giant. Now, I believe Lord Shiva was actually from another planet entirely. 
hence he's pictured so very often with blue skin and 15 feet tall. And so when humanity fell into the lower dimensions all these ancient elder beings came to the earth to assist humanity in their full body ascension. And so the Kundalini given to humanity by Lord Shiva is here to assist this process. Hmm. Okay, tell us a little bit more too about this, but I also wanna, um, if I could, can I bring in uh, Sri Shirdi Sai Baba, the one from a hundred plus years ago, uh, uh -huh. It'll be a black and white photo, but if you don't mind, put put your hand out, catch the vibe, and just catch an additional topic offshoot for exactly what you're talking about right now, a continuation. Mm -hmm. So then... what I'm receiving is the divine remembrance of the technology of mantra chanting and how this is here to assist humanity in purifying the geometry of their body geometry and vibration being ultimately one and so we can understand the process of ascension it is the process of purifying and aligning our geometry with the the path of mantra chanting is a path within yoga an ancient technology of consciousness to assist us in purifying our vibrational frequency and harmonizing our energy and in turn geometry so that's what i was reading through mm, that I last today Okay, and I'm going to put Shiva up as well. Now, this is just a photo pulled. Um, I didn't have one handy, but that's what I've been scrambling on the whole time. Mm, beautiful. And again, if you don't mind doing one more off of this and how each person is relating to it unconsciously each day, but not giving themselves credit for what we'll call the slowest, smallest tasks. And if they would only slow down to appreciate it, they'd have the moment of Samadhi, Satori, or just we'll call it appreciation with a capital A. Because mm -hmm. I, I truly believe people are unconsciously doing everything when it comes to letting go. Uh, it mm -hmm. might take lifetime, decades, to a, or a car wreck or a divorce to go, whoa, I've been up here way too much. So if you mm -hmm. don't handling it in a more teaching manner, how would you connect the dots here? So what I received from a picture of Lord Shiva was the importance of breathing and tuning into the present moment, which is also so key for transcending time and space as we move into 5D, is the space of non-attachment and the realization that all is now. And so that all that we seek, all states of consciousness, whether that be love, joy, abundance, success, flow, it is, is all accessible here in the now, where as we tune into our breath, we can greater align with these states of being that are available to us in the present moment Oof. okay for 20 years i had something written in a diary i think it was 1991 or two when i first moved back to new york city um and i had the expression non-duality come my way i think it took me 18 years to actually understand what non-duality might be um but here's the quote it's siddha katrapa and i'll go ahead and uh read it in just a second but it's whatever the yogin sees is his instruction and realization that all he sees is unborn. That is the most excellent guru. Innocence is the way to realize non-duality for here the effects of virtue and vice are one. So I felt like some of what you were just saying is totally aligned with that. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, can you talk to us about the chakras and what have you been learning? It's been over 10 years now. What have you been learning about consciousness, the chakras, vibrations, alignment, all the way up to, we'll call it diamond consciousness? Mm -hmm. And so I mean, the chakras, they are vortexes that distribute prana throughout our body. And then we have the, the nadis or meridians as the Chinese call them, the yogis call them nadis that distribute the prana from our chakras throughout our physical body and actually into our expanded light body as well. And so what I've been seeking ever since I began this spiritual quest is the most streamlined effective path to facilitate our full body ascension, including the alignment of our chakras, because as we align our chakras, we naturally begin to raise our Kundalini and expand it into our light body. And so, of course, there are many different paths to assist this, such as Reiki yoga, Kundalini yoga, and many different other modalities of healing. 
Now, the most powerful form of healing that I have encountered came about through becoming initiated as a theta healer, which really upgraded my awareness in Christ consciousness, also known as crystalline consciousness, which works the premise that our kundalini is already fully risen. Our chakras are already fully aligned. Our light body is already fully activated. It's just a matter of how much of who we truly are, are we allowing ourselves to realize? And so I combine the path of kundalini yoga with Christ consciousness, where we're bringing in this divine crystalline template of our higher self and highest timeline into the here and now and embodying it in fullness. And so you can understand bringing in the crystalline template as a, a top to bottom perspective, whereas the ancient path of kundalini yoga or yoga as a bottom to top perspective. Does that make sense? Mm, well put. It's in the middle. And so both are really key for the, the integration of our higher dimensional self. Now, do you just, if you've got someone on the beach in Mexico and they're your client, do you just tap them on the shoulder? Do you get them doing yoga? Tell us a little bit about how you help them let go of what they know long enough to drop from here to here. Mm -hmm. So it depends. It depends where somebody is at on their journey. If they are new on the spiritual path, if they have been on the spiritual path for some time. But I assist people in really moving out of the head and into the heart through experience. And so Kundalini Yoga, also light language is a very powerful tool that I work with to assist people in really moving into the heart-centered consciousness because it's not something we can understand. Although we may be able to understand some aspects to it, it is more of a heart-centered, even telepathic form of communication. And so... I help people experience in that way. Oh, okay. Experiencing the power of the Kundalini within. I'm so glad that you said light language isn't something we can understand like at this level with the English language. Mm. I'll call it light symphony or just something beyond words and that you get the gist of it, but it maybe unpacks over time as well when you get a dose of it. How about that? Is that okay? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Uh, let me bring another India figure for you. It'll be Krishna, Lakshmi... Ganesh, whoever comes up first, Vishnu. Okay, I'm going to put Vishnu up and he'll suggest another extension of what we're talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, where are we going now? Uh -huh. So what came through like super strong is the new earth and universal consciousness connected to the planetary cycles and how... It's like the universe of non-duality is now anchoring into this universe. And so this is the universe where many of the ancient deities of India reside, the divine universe of crystalline light, so of Christ. And I'll have another figure for you. It'll probably be Lakshmi, I'm guessing, yes. And then Krishna after that. But here's Lakshmi. She'll add another mini chapter. Mm. And how does <laughs> compassion, gentleness, kindness play a part in this? Less thinking is what I'll call it. Mm. So I received like this divine golden light from Lachmi, the royal code to the kingdoms. And then you mentioned compassion. How does compassion connect with it all? I would say compassion is really the path home to love. Like having compassion for our fellow brothers and sisters. Something I often teach is how even those who hurt us, they only hurt us because they are hurting within themselves. And so when we're able to meet them from that awareness, we are able to find compassion for them. And in turn, forgiveness, which is the bridge home to love. And so that's also what came through there. And you, it doesn't mean you have to hang out with them. It doesn't mean they have to stay your flat. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean you have to become business partners with them. It just means a broader awareness and allowing for mm. what's mm -hmm. beautiful. Okay. Uh, we're still going to do one more. I think I had Krishna standing by. Uh, I don't know how people like their Krishna drawings, but here it is. And 
if you don't mind catching a lot of extra vibe here, a lot of gentleness, even flowers for people at home watching, catch roses in the air, catch um, hyacinth. I don't know how to say it. Hibiscus if you like Hawaii. And have you got it okay, Elle? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, what what could you take us for the next stretch via Krishna? And if you need to close your eyes one more time, you'll get a quick download. Mm -hmm. So what I heard was remember the giants. Humanity is being called to awaken to our ancient history and the elders who walked before us. But the Himalayan mountains and many of the ancient Indian deities serve as an activation for this divine remembrance and awareness. And as we awaken to our ancient history, we can begin to clearly see where we are returning to, for it is the ancient future and realms beyond time that begin to reveal itself to us. Mm. Okay, so we had mentioned this before the show as well. We were talking about the difference between thinking, we'll call it everything that goes on above the neck. It can be considered a waste of energy at times, but guess what? Give yourself a break at home. You're going to think forevermore. There's very few people who can cut off thinking for very long. Uh, it's going to happen. So 7% less thinking, I'm going to quote an angel named Charlotte, is all she says you have to do to walk a smoother path and to let to get an Olympic gold medal, speaking of running and everything else. Um, 7% less thinking a week, a day, a month, it's all the same. Can you talk to us about the difference between thinking and awareness? And the reason why I mention this is Heather has said that thinking is time, time oriented, and uh, being in the heart is timeless. It's what Joseph mm -hmm. talks about in the power of myth. It's eternity. You know, it's not completely without a little bit of time in a micro sense. Um, but when you're here, that's why everything slows down on the soccer field or the pitch or speeds mm -hmm. up. And you just know you're going to get the fourth goal in a row that day because you're rocking out or on the track, a Mondo track. 100 meters, 200 meters, uh, you just know you're going to set your PR before you've even started the race. You feel uh -huh. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I would agree. I would say thinking is in the head, is in the mind, whereas awareness, it, it is in the heart. It is what ultimately bridges us into love. You know, thinking, it can even be seen as linear, whereas awareness, it can be seen as nonlinear knowing that precludes possibility and knowing that allows for all as it already is. Uh-huh. How about that? Beautiful. Good. Um, why don't we put Heather up? And if you could, she's got another one of those. It doesn't have to be a chapter, but it could. But if you don't mind getting a phrase, a reminder for us all about being in the heart more, she makes photos she does light energy form she shows up as hearts and i'll try to put one up for my cell phone i'm scrolling right now mm. here we go so here's another heart that she's made she's made a lot of hearts over the years plus a lot of ones that never quite you can tell it's going to be a heart i took the photo too fast too slow very funny mm. almost as good as a real heart and what are you getting from heather the angel so what I'm hearing is humanity is being called to focus on one another in alignment with their highest timeline. And so always looking and focusing upon others in love. Not only is this a service to others to assist them in embodying who they are here to be, but it is also what will assist you in embodying who you are here to be. And together, this is how we ascend the humanity. Okay, now the word ascension. I've heard that. I think I popped or started to kind of pop or open up or have things happen where I was like, whoa, I started grabbing intuitives by the lapel mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. This is like going to be 2011, 2012. It turns out a lot more of my friends were intuitive that I, that I didn't, I mean, I didn't know that they, mm -hmm. obviously a musician, an artist is going to be, um, yeah. but it can be awfully off-putting for people to see stuff they don't understand and to start to mm -hmm. feel things they don't appreciate yet or just mm -hmm. to be here more. It's the one place nobody wants to go. I'm quoting Peaceful Warrior. It could be The Alchemist. It could be Esther Hicks. It could be, um, there's another uh, book or movie out there. Uh, it would be Seth, the light being from the 1970s. He talks about the only place you can go for your own answers for your own journey is here mm -hmm. through the reality you know 
or new into a broader reality. Can you talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about your journey? What's an absolute fallback grounding exercise that reminds you to just take a load off up here and to be present more? Mm. So I find my exercise practice to be what grounds me the most is really cultivating a consistent daily practice. And so I like to exercise or I go for a walk, also meditation. And yeah, my prayer, prayer, pray every day to God. Ooh. Okay. Uh, do you already see light on people, on trees, on a pooch? all the time on command, just once a month, once a year, where are you for seeing consciousness itself, light, vibration, universal love, whatever you want to call it. Is it accidentally or is it, is it on command? Is it just somewhere in between it's evolving? Can you share mm -hmm. with us? Where are you on the whole light journey of the visual? So on command, I can do it for sure. Ooh. Sometimes accidentally it just appears as well. Um, because I, I focus on upgrading my psychic abilities and this has been such a huge part of my calling ever since I awakened in 2013 is I wanted to learn how to see wanted to remember how to see and through the sacred geometry which I've been drawing for 10 years now it's really assisted in bridging me into that higher awareness and you know there's been times in my third eye has been like so open I'm like seeing the energy the fractals and you know, it's very open to the point where I'm like, okay, now I've got to ground it. And I want to like come back into 3D. <laughs> mm. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a gradual process of integrating this fifth dimensional consciousness. For people at home, well, let's turn the label away, but a Bic lighter, I'm going to light the flame. Just anybody at home, we do this every once in a while in a show. Name any color at home that you see, gold, white, yellow. And if you don't mind, Ellen, what are you seeing? If you're hopefully keeping the genie in the bottle just for one second. Um, mm -hmm. What do you just see on a regular Bic lighter? White, gold, yellow, were you already getting extra light? So I was seeing rainbow. Okay, uh, and now I'm gonna do it again, but people at home, you can put your hand on your heart if you need extra help. I only have one rule or bit of structure besides telling everybody to breathe every minute for the next hour. Um, and my rule would be, Oh yeah, just ask the universe, but if you don't mind addressing angels, they're here to help you get from here to here for anything. Where to find a good cup of coffee, to your homework, to your business stuff, to your relationship stuff, just put it to them. Um, but ask to get out of your head, into your heart, and to help them make this nice. You'll see extra light on the flame. Ellen's L is already there, but here we go. And I'll ring a bell to try to distract your thinking. Anana Bell, I think from India. And Elle, what are you getting all around the flame now that you know is not the Bic lighter? So I'm seeing a beautiful green, emerald green light. Nice. And then we'll take it one more level. I always forget to do this on the regular show. So I remember today, I'm very excited. I'm going to hold my finger up like a Bic lighter and you can catch my light coming off here. Let me go back on an old surf bodyboarding trip. And what are you saying on my finger? So I've seen several colors. The first one was like a, a bright kind of purple color. And then I was seeing like celestial blues. And then I saw some orange. Nice. And orange is one of my favorite colors. Um, and I'm lucky I didn't hold my finger off screen. I did it correctly. While mm -hmm. we're on this track of experiencing a little, I'll hold up that Tibetan court. Tibetan quartz crystal, did I say it correctly? Um, and we did this before the show. So we know it talks, it's got a vibration. This could be a lot for some, but I don't think so for many in the audience. Everything has a vibe, a, a trail in the jungle. It speaks to you. The trees will talk to you if you'll listen. It, it would be like tasting the wind if you're a Native American, except you wouldn't do it that way. You just feel, is it the right time for whatever you're about to embark on? A run, gardening, something more traditional like farming, something like that. Here's a Tibetan quartz crystal. Ellen, if you don't mind feeling the vibe there, and it even has, a everything has consciousness. I believe many people in India believe this, but it has a reminder for us along this vein that we're talking about. And what's the reminder we're getting? 
many of the ancient elders, our ancestors, they were in this fifth dimensional consciousness. And the codes, they have been passed down through our DNA throughout generations. And now we are being called to remember and to come home to the realms beyond time within us. The higher dimensions, they are ultimately within. Can you give us some help? There's, we're getting saturated in social media and with you know very factual experiences when it comes to life beyond what we know. I know there's a huge focus on like UFOs, UAPs, crash retrievals, biologics. There's a lot of complex terminology. What doesn't get discussed very often, if at all, ever, whether it's a conference, a TV show, uh, a podcast, a press release, no one's talking about uncon unconditional love, maybe a little bit of expansion of humanity, and then no one's talking about non-corporeal energy-based life forms, which would be just another way to say really nice unconditional love beings from Jesus, mm -hmm. Muhammad, Mary, Buddha, your passed over loved ones who are reconciled to angels, to light beings, to a jinn who's East Asian mysticism, to fairies. It's a lot again to take in, but can mm -hmm. you just sort through how there's so many different layers or flavors of consciousness that there, I'll try to sum it up this way, that maybe love really is the fabric of the universe and that there's nothing to fear. And that's mm -hmm. a big, I just gave you a huge slab to try to tackle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a lot that can be said there. So as we are multidimensionally awakening, so many different beings are beginning to reveal themselves to us, particularly with everything that's being disclosed in the in the field of ufology. There's a lot of people beginning to come forward about their abduction experiences and all of this. And so really there is nothing to fear. And, you know, what I found to be the most powerful protection and what keeps us crystal clear and streamlined in multidimensional awakening is the consciousness and frequency and spirit of Christ. It is by all means the most purifying and potent protection there is in the universe. And so as we become one with the spirit of Christ, which is the next level of our human evolution, any dark beings, they cannot interfere with us. And we become focused on the beings that are in Christ, the divine light beings. I've seen negativity as just darkness or gray light or whatever you want to call it, black light, mm -hmm. something like that. And from a golf ball size to you know other experiences, I don't put any more attention or focus to that mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the one thing I'd say I've learned in 12 years, besides the mm -hmm. fact that there is such thing as no limits and that there's complex people and interesting people and they may be the same person, just depends on which day of the week you catch them. Uh, the one thing that I've learned, oh yeah, okay, is where you put your focus or where you put your focus is where you put your focus. And it's mm -hmm. the it's a little bit like surfing why yeah. I love in my social media so many surfing shots. But you know, where your body turns and where you put your your focus for surfing is where you end up going. The same in life. Can you share with us a little bit about how that has been a learning experience as well? You were already experiencing it as an 800. 600 meter just a track specialist you're experiencing mm -hmm. it in other forms of life and i would argue every person watching has been an olympian in certain things it could be just reading detective series novels in their chair mm -hmm. every weekend and that they are part of the storyline they love it they feel like they're there it's letting go um but can you share with us how it's not about the details so much it's uh -huh. about letting go yeah, well, one of the first things that the, the angels taught me was your thoughts create your reality. And so where you are focusing is so very important. But in regard to letting go, I mean, that really brings me into the awareness of the Buddhist wisdom is like this state of non-attachment. Because yes, our thoughts create our reality, but if we want to create something and we're thinking about creating it so much, we can actually create resistance, like we attach to an outcome. And so when we actually let go and trust that the divine is bringing to us that we, should, we wish to manifest, that's when we actually begin to accelerate it. So they come hand in hand, those two topics, letting go, but also our consciousness creating our reality. And so that's what I've found to be really useful in the process of manifestation and in relation to this particular topic, the state of non-attachment but also focusing into alignment with love, ultimately. Uh, beautiful. Okay, I have a quote. 
It's um, going to be from Jesus in like 2014 or something like that. Uh, I just have to find it. I took a screenshot. This is the wonder of being a host. You get to multitask and I don't like doing that. Um, he said, compassion is here for all. A person need only be open to receive. A new consciousness emerges. Details are not so important. Love is love. And I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I, that is my flower photograph in the background. I'm just going to take a little credit for that. A rose up close. Okay. But let's get back to something important, which is, can you talk to us about how it's not about details, which is the dimension up here. And that's what helps us get out of any situation. Dilemma. My problem is, my situation is, you don't understand the stuckness versus <laughs> suchness here. How obvious is it how sitting in front of all of us is it in each moment because the now getting out of here is the actual avenue the opening the opening openness the doorless door the gateless gate that zen talks about and so on uh -huh. can you can you talk about the these dynamics uh-huh so what comes to me is how i mean we are currently incarnated in the third and fourth dimension the time space reality that is really quite dense it's like the the realms of matter but as we move into the higher dimensional perspectives, matter, it begins to dissolve. Everything becomes now. And so everything that we are seeking to manifest, it is all already available here in the now. And it's just a matter of how much of who we truly are, we allow ourselves to realize. But whether we want to call in more abundance, more joy, more happiness, more love, more flow, whatever it may be. This is a state that is available now. We don't have to wait. We don't have to be something we are not. Rather, we've just got to remember who we already are and embody that state of being. And this is what you teach for folks, correct? Yeah, and this is what I teach. Okay. And so Chogyam Trungpa, I only mispronounced Rinpoche for maybe eight years. Also, when I first met him, and this is, we'll call it dimensionally, if I do Transdimensional channeling for a multidimensional experience, fun, mm -hmm. I'll add instead of an experience, multidimensional fun, it's love and above. So only the fun stuff. Um, when I first met him, I said, hey, that's a mouthful for Americans. Is there another name we can call you? Only this guy would do that. Um, but he was totally cool with it. He said, call me Gentle Frank, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> um, so Gentle Frank or Chogyam Trungpa. And I've had a couple of students of his from the 1970s when he was alive, meet him fully and see him which is just wonderful that they can have that reunion. But I love this quote, taking one breath is like taking one step. Oh no, I've got a different quote, but both bring peace and, ha and harmony. But here's mm -hmm. even a better quote. This is right to what you were just saying. Sorry about that. The way to experience nowness is to realize that this very moment, this very point in life is always the occasion. Mm -hmm. And that is you're carrying around an invisible button that says happiness, love, heart, multidimensionality, or just letting go openness. And you don't see it very often. You certainly don't hit it very often. And yet all day long, unconsciously, you're hitting it all day long, your heart. You can live and rest here and walk a smoother path. How would you want to communicate that it's right here, right now? You don't have to run off to India to an ashram and do chanting or yoga necessarily. Not that those aren't, there's a million modalities and there's a million instructors and you're going to get just what you need from the universe. Trust in that. But how would you remind people it's just here and now right here? Mm -hmm. So I feel through the gateway of the breath. It is one of the greatest guides into the present moment. And also the rhythm of the heart beating in the chest. If these two vehicles can really assist us in moving into that present moment, also in union with the sensations in the body. And the more we practice, the easier it is to integrate this awareness where the practice, it is really central for moving into the present moment and to being able to do that instantaneously, no matter where we are upon the earth, no matter what is going on around us, being able to find that stillness even in the midst of a busy street, it's all available in the here and now. Can you use a pet as a substitute or a surrogate for having to do your own heart? Can you grab your cat or your dog? And if they're comfortable and they're going to allow for this and not freak out at the higher vibes coming in, can you hear their heartbeat and use the same methodology basically? For sure. But um, 
it's best if we're able to do this within ourselves because we don't need something external to us but sometimes those external activation points they can be useful i mean the animals they are incredibly powerful higher dimensional beings incarnated on earth you know the cats particularly very very beautiful in that they emit this frequency that has the capacity to transmute energy through the power of their purring but ideally we want to be able to do this within ourselves without needing somebody or something external to us to bring about that state of being so it's ownership of what you've already got and just paying attention is is key mm -hmm. and also connecting with god you know god is our greatest companion our greatest guide our greatest superpower if for our connection and cultivating that relationship with the divine anything is possible and I don't get to say this ever. I don't think I've said on air ever, but I'll do God. But the way I describe God for people, and they've got to be good at listening to angels and just letting go and getting comfortable with angels and some other figures so that they're, you know, if it's a baseball analogy, they've taken a few swings at the plate um, before you go so big. It, to me, it's all voices at once and unison speaking is the only way I'd know how to put language to it. It's big. You just have to be cool as a cucumber. You basically do need to be a little bit of an Olympian to just let go, but it's everything at once. It could be music as well. Um, here's the tiger, the divine tiger, the one the divine mother rides on from mm -hmm. India. If folks at home want to catch a tiger's roar in the jungle in the distance, or they want to catch the scent of the tiger, a highest vibe scent, shampooed up, uh, pure action is this tiger's on everyone's team from India. If, if people want to catch a temple incense smell from India, the highest vibe. But what are you getting from the tiger about a few steps people can take each day to slow down and appreciate what they already have? Mm, so I'm feeling, I'm hearing, take courage, take action with courage. And believe in yourself. Mm. It is the small steps that we take that ultimately bring us to where we are going. Where we want to be that consistent action is so very key and having faith and courage and bravery in each action that we take is the foundation for our highest timeline to manifest hmm. and faith i had a definition in my head that i've only known for 10 years but hold on faith can be religious or non-religious faith it's the same letting go to go from here to here it's trusting that everything is already of the highest intent for all and that yeah. you're in the perfect place right now. And this doesn't help anybody if they're BMW, they just got into a car wreck and they're two minutes removed from it, but trusting that each moment is perfect as it is. Good luck with mm -hmm. that as a human being. If you're up here, you have to reject that. If you're here, you're okay with it, but you again, still have to find your own translation and your own yeah. flow. Here's Ger yeah, here's Geronimo. And pure action figure as well. As soon as I did the tiger, I heard Geronimo. He's mm -hmm. action, 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 dry wit, humor. You can catch tobacco in the air. Let me do two hands. Uh, sweetgrass, juniper. What are you getting in the air for a smell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm getting the tobacco. But I'm also seeing this deep earthy essence and sense the amazonian rainforests Ooh. okay and he's got something for you to i'm going to use a complex word espouse on he'll tee, tee up the golf ball for you to take the swing mm -hmm. and you got it I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something out loud, and I don't mean to interrupt the flow. You grab what you're going to grab here or he's got for you. But that whole inner fearless, inner, inner fearless, peaceful warrior that we have when we're in our heart, that is our journey, even though, yeah, the journey itself isn't even necessarily the right word for it. It's just being itself, which is compassion mm -hmm. itself for all. But it's it's having the guts to pay attention to be here in mm -hmm. spite of your bills, your family, that cousin the car wreck, the divorce, what you know, political parties, countries, conflict. Um, if more people would just do that paying attention or listening, 
there would be yeah. less conflict in any given situation. Okay, but Ellen, it's up to you. Take us from here. Geronimo gave you something. Uh huh. So what I received is the importance to remember that we have everything that we seek already within us. And we're being called home to the organic pathway of ascension, remembering the, the power that our body has to heal itself and how the Pachamama, the mother earth, she provides to us all of the medicines that we need. We don't need synthetic medicines. We have the capacity to heal ourselves. We don't even need plant medicines, but they are there to help us reach that higher consciousness. But there will come a time where we will be moving into a space where we do not even need that. We have the capacity to heal ourselves and to come home to who we truly are at our core organically without anything external. So that's what I was receiving from that master. Beautiful. Okay. Sri Ananda Mayama. I'll put her up. Just gentleness on an Indian breeze is how I'll describe her. Very soft. And if you want to catch a flower smell in the air, what flower are you getting? I'm getting like a rose, and also a jasmine. Hmm. And she had a very strong reminder. I'm trying to remember what it was. It might have been about knowing. It's about not knowing was her big thing that you, again, already have it within in the heart. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll put one more figure up. A jinn who's East Asian mysticism, he's knowledge with, um, he's like the Encyclopedia Britannica meets the Energizer Bunny. Um, petite little fellow, absolutely wonderful, enthusiasm all the way. Um, I'm going to use a uh, Hollywood photo, but here he is, let his eyebrows even start moving more like clouds. Yeah. And you should get a very strong connection from him. He's golden sparks. If you see him one way, you can see him full on. You won't see his face ne necessarily. If you just say the word gin, it always goes straight to him. He's unconditional love mm -hmm. and knowledge been around for eons. Mm -hmm. And he definitely has something to add to the conversation. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is discipline, crystal clear clarity and focus is so very key. Cultivate discipline. Wow. Cultivate discipline. Which is what you've been doing on this show. So let's go to diamond consciousness. And I think that's a good lead in. So mm. what about the Kundalini Express, all the chakras? And mm. if we talk about the colors. Um, let's do it this way. Okay. I'm going to show my energy. Maybe you'll show us yours, but that'll be for the audience to see. So mm. let me do this. I'll put two fingers up. Now in India, they'll do it this way, but it's really awkward mm -hmm. when I'm standing. And I think it was Celestine Prophecy, the movie, they'll do it this way. You mm -hmm. can just see the light between my fingers in just a second. Mm -hmm. okay, hold on. I made the foam move. Okay. And then what light are you seeing flow between my fingers? I'm seeing purple light. Okay, now I'm not crazy, you're not crazy, uh, but, wow, I'm gonna lose my entire train of thought. Okay, so if you if you don't mind, can you hold your hand up like you have a ring on your hand and you're looking at the ring and just see your light, but ask your favorite figures or figure to come in, you know, Durga, Shiva, somebody, and have it accentuated for you so you go, whoa, it just got, the volume got turned up so you see brighter light. But can you talk to us about, um, like Joy said that red light, the chakra red. Now there's a million definitions if you go online, everyone has their own chart. But an angel said that um, red is laughter, the vibrational laughter. I love that. I thought that was very original. And then Abe, the Abraham of old said that rainbow light is the mark or sign of a healer. But to me, I always say, if you're seeing rainbow light, stop the interview, run out and buy a lotto ticket. If you were stuck on your memoir, the last chapter, you've been working on it for two years, time to go hit the typewriter or the keyboard and go get that done. Rainbow light, you are wide open. 
And so it goes all the colors. Green is the heart, not red. Um, green's the heart, maybe a purple, the blue stuff, um, blue, purple, white, I believe, rainbow light. Can you talk to us as we get up and broader and more connected with the universe and this whole rainbow light body thing? Like mm -hmm. I activate the rainbow light body for folks, but I, if you gave me a quiz, I would probably fail. It's more in the experience I do, but I can't explain it necessarily. So talk to us more about what do we do with all this? I mean, so we raise the Kundalini up into our higher chakras, and then it goes around our body in a torus field, expanding into our macabre light body. And so this is often the wisdom that is left out of yoga. Is there if you go and study with like a real guru who's deeply initiated into this, but expanding into the macabre. This is the purpose of the Kundalini is we're raising it up to expand into our light body. And so this assists us moving into Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness, another, another name for Christ is crystalline consciousness. Uh -huh. And so this is a very pure, very clear, very clean, very pristine state of awareness. It's crystalline. And Would so it it's love. Ultimately. Would it be clear, clear light often? Like light beyond light? Is that an okay way to say it? Yeah, you could see it like that. People see it in different ways. There is no correct answer because it's multidimensional and it's okay. got many different expressions. But crystalline consciousness is like the, the neutral, crystalline, pure template. You can understand it as love. As we align all of our cells, all of our DNA, the subatomic particles that form the atoms of our being, the frequency and consciousness of love, we become very pure, become transparent, like a clear quartz crystal. And so from here, we can begin to access many new dimensional states of awareness and the rainbow light, it can come in, or the diamond light. And there are many other different crystalline rays of light as well that also begin to reveal themselves. Each crystalline ray is like a, a dimensional realm and master to assist us in different teachings and in activating different states of awareness within us. Let's do a lightning round about what you just said with each figure adding a quick phrase, a reminder about what you just said. So here's Sai Baba, black and white version from mm -hmm. India, the one from 100 plus years ago. What's he have a reminder on about either rainbow light or uh, crystalline light? Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is the crystalline consciousness is something that has been woven throughout the yoga path. You have, of course, Krishna, who's famously, who was famously embodying Krishna consciousness. You have Krishna consciousness, Christ consciousness, crystalline consciousness. These are all different names for the same divine fifth dimensional state of awareness, just at different points along the human timeline. It is the Christic frequency. And so each of these codes can facilitate a greater understanding and awakening to the nature of this next level of our human evolution as we move into Christ consciousness, as we move into crystalline consciousness. Okay, four archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel. Mm -hmm. And they'll weigh in on the same topic, but with just a twist, so it's still fresh. Mm -hmm. And what are you getting? Mm -hmm. The importance of the remembrance of the macabre light body vessel. This is our vehicle of ascension. Macabre, it means chariot. And so as we expand into our macabre, we can begin to move into higher dimensional states of embodiment. And this is where our mystical cities awaken. And so as we focus, as we streamline our focus in spiritual ascension, in the integration of our higher dimensional light body, we become a vessel ultimately of Christ. And this is what every religion, every philosophy, every group is technically oriented around whether they know it or not. If it's consciousness uh -huh. studies at an institute, be it IONS or Univers University of Oregon or something somewhere, uh, they're all pointing in the same direction. Mm. The quantum group uh, uh -huh. you know, seeking the light, but the light's already here and it doesn't necessarily have to be sought. You just have to let go of the seeking and that sort of uh -huh. I did the best I could. Here's Charlotte, another angel. Uh, have her add something to the mix. Mm. 
So Charlotte, <laughs> every time this card has come up, she shows me the diamond frequency of the diamond light. And so the diamond light can greater assist us in awakening to the nature of crystalline consciousness. The diamond light is found within crystalline consciousness. So just like we have the physically manifested clear quartz crystal, which expands into the multidimensional crystal ray of light, we have the physically manifested diamond, which expands multidimensionally into the diamond ray of light. And so the diamond frequency can assist us in awakening our diamond light body, which in many ways is the next level and layer beyond our crystalline light body. Each layer facilitating a deeper integration is to the nature of Christ. Diamond light in particular is incredibly powerful for awakening our psychic senses and purifying our light body. Okay, I'm going to uh, ask your permission, Charlotte's permission, it'll really be angels here, but I'll put my hand out in Texas all the way to the UK now. We should have done this when you were in Mexico, but we might have. I forgot when we talked when you were in Mexico. With your permission, only my highest intent, really angels, kick my thinking and worries and fears and judgments out of the way. I'm going to put my hand up. If you'll put your hand up and do the same though, so I'm not picking up on anything except your highest intent. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're connected and you're feeling energy enthusiasm hopefully got it mm -hmm. okay now with my other hand like it's a ping pong ball i'm going to do three rainbow light whooshes your way we'll sandbag the first two that's probably not very spiritual language but small and then we'll turn the dial up on the third and if we're lucky we'll get to do diamond crystalline consciousness as a fourth i've never done that before but we'll stick with rainbow light right now this first one just small you'll feel it with your permission go up your up or down, up your Kundalini, Kundalini chakras. And here it goes. And did you get that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, could you use words as to how you felt that? So I felt like... Nice. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> we had an Oprah Super Soul 100 teacher who said on the third one, it was champagne corks popping. Uh, which uh -huh. I think is the coolest. So people have to watch that show and it's not out mm -hmm. yet. Um, but the one from Sweden, she's fantastic. Uh, Gordana uh, Birnat, she's wonderful. Uh -huh. okay, here comes the second one. We'll turn the knob up a little. If you have anything you've got to do or run later or project, put a little focus there and let the energy take care of it so that it's already unfolded in the future and it's it's done. You've checked that box, no work. You don't have to work as hard people on anything just allow and let the universe come in and bring it forward for you create by imagining okay here comes the second one let me clear out and again good mm -hmm. a little bigger yeah that was bigger that one yeah okay the third let's go for some rainbow light i'll back up a little so you can see the hand this, just volume up, you're at a concert. Let's go for the big whoosh. Um, everyone grab the bottle of Jack or the packet of cigarettes. You'll need it afterwards. Feel what you can feel. If you need to do a chubby checker or Elvis to just reset and open up, allow, try to picture this as not me, but angels or Jesus or Krishna or anybody. Rainbow light is rainbow light. You're already living in it. Here it comes. And now there you have to use words on that one. What happened? So that one, I was feeling more like um, a vibrating, a soft vibration swooping up. Good. Okay. Does Charlotte, do I have permission to do diamond consciousness? Yes. Okay. So here it goes. Don't know what it is. I'm learning as you're learning as everyone's learning. Guess what? Learning and expansion never stops. It's not about knowing. I'm quoting an angel named Dale who's technically from Andromeda, by the way, coached an Olympic athlete who won a lot of golds. And she's famous from, I think the late seventies or early eighties. But the point is um, we're always, every moment, I'm going to try to quote him. Everything is your instruction, like we said before, but our, we get stuck adulting that we block our own learning and expansion. And this is what Ellen's been talking about the whole time. So forget words. Let me get back to what I was supposed to do. Diamond, crystalline, consciousness. And here it goes. But on this one, I'm going to blow through that microphone. That's a ginormous microphone behind my laptop. So after I do this, you're going to see me go off camera and blow a little. 
if you allow for uh, Tulum, the ocean to blow in your face on that one, um, I'll do the best I can to make this look good on camera. Here it comes. Did you get the breeze too? I did, yeah. Oh. I see the ocean. Yeah, the horizon. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. Where can you take us to wrap this up? Um, people can find you. I'll have all your details below the video, but go ahead and just give your website. And then if you don't mind just talking about how you work with folks, if they want to, you're super calm, collected, you know what you're saying. It's not the knowing. You're living what you're saying. And so it's... Um, your being is all I know. And you share your beingness with others is the best I can do to give you an accolade. Mm -hmm. And so you can find me at the school of creation.com. I'm also on YouTube and on Instagram at L light of Ascension on YouTube. I'm E light. And so I assist light workers, healers, yogis, shaman in becoming crystal clear on their soul purpose and making more money online. Mm. I also assist people in awakening if you want to transition from the corporate world into a more spiritual way of life from service and really become crystal clear on what your sole purpose is and how you are able to assist this planetary ascension process. And, is and that, yeah, that's your one. unique life path is helping others with their unique life path. Uh -huh, yeah, for sure. And also with this, the multidimensional awakening. Through the sword is the process ultimately of coming home to our highest timeline. And what is so very beautiful about that is I work with techniques that are very, very streamlined. No matter which area you are coming from in your life, I've worked with a multitude of people from different religions, from different backgrounds. When we focus on ultimately coming home to our highest timeline, because it is a quantum way of working, we have the capacity to become crystal clear on what our sole purpose is, no matter which direction we are coming from in life. I'm a big believer that everything that we've been through in life has been preparing us for what we are here to do. But when we set our intention to ultimately becoming a divine conduit of God, to work through, to assist the elevation of planetary consciousness, the divine begins to work in truly magnificent ways. And with this, things can begin to open, things can begin to shift so very quickly. And so it's always an honor to witness my clients coming home to their highest timeline and the magic that they bring to the earth in the process. Mm. Okay, one last angel, never quite done. Uh, here's Charlotte again with one extra reminder for all of us as we go about our daily lives. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what'd you get? Remember to play. Let your inner child light be the way and follow your excitement in service to the divine of the most high and watch the magic begin to unfold in all areas of your life. Beautiful. Soul coach Ellen Holmes on the APL Spotlight Series coming to us right now from the UK. But it, if you cut her a year in the future, it might be India. It might be Spain, Mexico. She travels a lot. Thank you very much, Ellen, for being on the show. Thank you, Michael. It's been an honor. Thank you for inviting me. It's lovely to connect with you, brother. Love it.